We're very happy to have our very own uh, Dalu in person, live. Uh, it's, uh, too bad we don't have a little better audience for you. I'm really sorry. But, it's okay. Uh, uh, I have some problem with me. Uh, just, yeah, just click that and then get rid of those controls. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll start. Talk about gauge invariance and mass Okay, today I'll talk about gauge invariance and formation of mass field and true Uh, This work will appear soon, hopefully in this week. Okay, uh, I will, um, the outline of the talk is uh, divided by three parts. The first, uh, I will introduce like a wide quantum theory as the inevitable outcome of quantum mechanics plus the Lorentz invariance. Then I will go on to say yeah, the, the recent development in the scattering amplitude community uh, ha, ha, has indicated some, uh, some unshow way to formulate, uh, maybe that is unshow way to formulate the quantum field theory. I will introduce this group and unshow method the method amplitude. Then I will discuss the, 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 the work. Uh, uh, we, we, we have done in the, in the past two years about the gate, we derived gate, gate invariance from unshell massive, massive amplitude and the tree level unitarity. Okay, uh, the argument of this Lorentz environment uh, of S matrix is following. We define the, the S matrix as a, uh, the operator uh, projecting from the in, from, from uh, it, it, it's a, it's the overlap between the in state and, and the outer state. We, if we want to use this operator language, we can, we can define the, the, the uh, as operator as a, as, as the operator between the uh, between the free state phi alpha and phi beta. Then if if you divide the, this this Hamiltonian into the free Hamiltonian plus interaction uh, uh, interaction interaction term, uh, you in the time dependent perturbation theory you can uh, uh, write uh, the the S operator as, as the uh, as the uh, in, uh, exponential integral of, of, of the Interaction, what has interaction Hamiltonian. So basically, uh, and uh, so it can be shown if you can rewrite the interaction Hamiltonian, interaction part of Hamiltonian as the scalar integral of the of, of some density, and the density is a scalar in the sense you have the free trans the Lorentz transformation, it will transform itself uh, plus some coordinate transformation. If we the commute and the space like or light like uh, 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 you, 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 if you commute at a space like a lab like separation, then you can you can prove that you exist an operator, uh, uh, the same operator you lambda acting on the in state and out state. This ensure uh, the the Lorentz environment for S matrix. This is the way that, this way they are seen. Okay, uh, in the time dependent perturbation theory, uh, if you have something, if you have interaction. Uh, in, 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 if you have interaction of Hamiltonian at the, at the spatial integral of, of scalar uh, density, uh, you, will, you will immediately have this uh, low environment of S matrix. Uh, but um, there is another principle called the cluster decomposition principle is saying, on the, on the other hand, uh, if, if you, you want to, write, if you can write the Hamiltonian in terms of the uh, 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 creation and hanging operator and uh, the coefficient of this operator, Contains a single spatial momentum conservation data function. You, you, you can see immediately the S matrix satisfy uh, the, the class, uh, cluster decomposition principle, which, which, is, uh, which is saying distant uh, determines should the year the I related the results. Basically, in the amplitude uh, factor, uh, uh, factorize into different parts. So then the, uh, on the one hand, we are saying if we want to love low end environments, uh, environments of S matrix. It seems like we want a locality become manifest because there is a density uh, interaction uh, Hamiltonian. But on the other hand, if we want a cluster decomposition principle manifest, it seems to indicate the Hamiltonian should be written as a function and annihilation and a creation operator. Then to reconcile this uh, Lorentz environments plus quantum mechanics, then we'll say we should build this, this uh, the Hamiltonian out of quantum field theory. This is the uh, one because the argument are saying. Uh, if you consider Lorentz environment as matrix and plus cluster decomposition principle, the, the, uh, the two things naturally call for quantum field theory as, as a building block, at least at a low energy. So uh, this is a very nice argument, but recently, uh, I, um, due to this uh, 
uh, marvelous simplicity or the maximum highly violating amplitude. If you look at this formula, it's very compact and for n gluon, of course the tree level n gluon maximum highly dividing amplitude, uh, this is just one line. And uh, this has motivated a lot of research saying, okay, you can we can formulate the, the probability uh, gauge theory in the in the twister space. And uh, eventually we, we have some BCFW recursion relation, or we can say in, in for silver young mills, we have some amplitude hedron formulation. This, 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 uh, this may suggest that, that the diamond exists the way to un, uh, that may exist the unshell formulation of quantum field theory because of this uh, uh, this uh, marvelous symmetry, marvelous symmetry that are not manifest in the Lagrangian uh, formulation. Uh, on the other hand, we were saying we, we want to make locality uh, manifest, but we uh, 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 on the other hand, we are making this symmetry, this, this marvelous simplicity of the amplitude very obscure in the Feynman, Feynman calculation, Feynman root calculation. So uh, uh, this is uh, the introduction saying why um, we are we, we are very interested in this, uh, this, uh, this question is, uh, is there any unshell formulation common theory really possible or not? Okay, uh, then before we are going to this, uh, to answer the big question, I, I will say uh, uh, what, what we have known now and what's the progress be, uh, be, being made recently. Uh, so they all starting from the little group definition. Um, the little group definition we're saying is a, a subgroup or lone group, and uh, either is the transformation will, will leave the momentum invariant. This definition of little group, and uh, according to Wigner classification, the particles can be defined as an irreducible representation of little group. Uh, this is starting point is we're starting from the particle, then we want a lone environment, then we, we build a quantum field. This, this is the logic uh, we want to adopt. Uh, adopt, but we're saying, but here we are just saying we def, we we starting from the particle, but we're starting from this uh, uh this uh, three particle on shell amplitude, we build our higher point on shell amplitude. This is another logic. Okay, so for little group, uh, I, I will make some because this is is the central part of the whole program. I will make a little bit of effort to explain what the little group is, is. from a kinematic uh, point. The little group is saying, okay, let's assume you, you choose the roughened momentum. Which means you can, for example, you, you can choose uh, for a massive particle, you can choose the rest frame. And uh, for, for the massive particle, you can choose the momentum in the z axis. So for any uh, general momentum, you know, can be obtained from the standard Lorentz transformation for, uh, uh, acting on the roughened frame. You choose because there are a lot of uh, Lorentz transformation can, can boost uh, uh, k meal to p meal, but you choose a specified version. Uh, and then the, the general transformation will be, uh, uh, will, 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 will be, you can define a general transformation for, for general transformation lambda, you can define a little group uh, element as, 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 this, uh, as a lambda L, e, a lambda L. This you can check immediately, this will keep the uh, reference from, from the same. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the Hebert space, uh, which is means, in, in the Hebert space means you have a rest frame, you can define a general, general momentum as a, as, a, as a unitary operator acting on the, uh, the reference state. Then the general Lorentz transformation uh, will be in, induced by the little group transformation, which means you have the U lambda acting on the general state. The, the transformation uh, in addition to the transformation of the momentum, you also transform the little group in the indices, which means uh, the whole Lorentz transformation is induced by little group transformation on the Hilbert space. This is the most uh, uh, important part. Then uh, let's go to some detail. For the uh, massive particles, the little group is uh, uh, you, you can choose the, uh, uh, the uh, standard momentum to be on, along the z-axis. You can see the little group is just the rotation along the z-axis and also some, uh, some combination of rotation and boost. Basically, this is the ISO2, the group. But, uh, to avoid continuum of state, we only consider the rotation along the z-axis. Otherwise, the, the, the state will have a, a, a continual label. So for the massive particle, the, the things become much similar. Uh, you, know, the, you, can, you can boost the rest frame and, uh, and the, the, the little group will just associate. This is the representation of little group will just say the spin degree freedom. OK. So basically, uh, 
once you have the lead group uh, definition, you can you you can try to to say uh, the introduce the massively spinner helicity variables to make the lead group transmission manifest. Let's see how how we, uh, how, uh, uh, how we can do it. It can be applied by the uh, by the property of SO three lead group. Actually, it's locally isomorphic to special linear group at, at a com in a uh, complex space. So. If for any four vector, you can define a two by two matrix, and the, the Lorenz uh, inner product will be the determinant of the uh, of, of this uh, momentum matrix. And um, because for the massive particle, the, the P equal zero, which means the, the matrix, the drag of the matrix is one, the, the, um, uh, the momentum matrix can be factorized in terms of the spinner value of lambda, lambda two. So then, then what does it mean? By saying this uh, spinner helicity value makes the little group transmission manifest, we can see, we can we can employ the same logic as we define this uh, uh, rough in the momentum and then the standard trans transformation and, and the general transformation. We can see we, we can define a uh, uh, standard spinner helicity variable lambda k uh, associated with uh, the standard momentum. Then the general momentum lamb, uh, for uh, the uh, the spinner for the general momentum will define by the standard Lorentz transformation. And then the, the general Lorentz transformation are acting on the spinner variable. It's just a phase rotation depending on the, the, the lambda, depending on the momentum. So, which this transformation exactly coincides with the transformation on the state, which means that if you look at the spinner helicity variables, they are uh, under the Lorentz transformation acting on the spinner, uh, spinner helicity variable. They are really transformed uh, 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 as a lead group scaling, and 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 the, the Lorentz covariance of the of the of the Lorentz covariance of the S matrix will, will have this uh, uh, lead group scaling uh, as a function with helicity. This, this uh, in, in other ways, the the amplitude, the helicity amplitude, a natural function of spinner helicity variables. And the lead, with the lead group transformation manifest. So recently, uh, I think by by uh, Nima Yuting Huang and uh, and another and and their collaborators, they they introduce saying the massive spinner variable is the same thing, similar to the massive one. For the massive one, you have SO three repetition, then you have spin degree freedom. Then for for each uh, uh, spinner variables, you you I you adding on spin index. Because the plus one half and minus one half, then the momentum will will have will can be seen in the inner product of the two uh, massive spinner variables. So uh, the Anshao condition can be imposed by determining the lambda alpha equals m. But we, well, I think we, uh, I will not emphasize it more. But I'm trying to say then what what, what do you mean by uh, make this group transformation manifest in the massive spinner variables? In the same way, similar to the massive one, you starting from a, from a, a, a reference momentum, then you define the standard Lorentz transformation, then at a general Lorentz transformation, uh, it, it, uh, in addition to the transmission momentum, uh, the, the spin degree freedom will be also transformed. This is by, by which we mean is uh, we adding a little group index i such that the little group transformation, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, to be more precise is uh, the lead global transformation corresponding to the general Lorentz transformation uh, will be become very manifest. And uh, in this language, the amplitude as a function of mass, massive spinner variables is saying they, uh, they are they are complete, completely symmetric with rank to S tensor. So this is the basic thing. Uh, uh, so can I ask you, this is, sorry, can I just ask some questions about this part? Okay. So, so I should think of, so the variable i goes from one to two, right? Yes. So should I think of the set of the lambda alpha as a Dirac spinner, a Majorana spinner? There are two spinners, two wild spinners here, right? Should I think of them as together making a Dirac spinner? Uh, lambda and lambda two together will make a Dirac spinner. Okay. And so if I want lambda, you can think the lambda. As uh, 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 you can see, the lambda really uh, as a, a wild spinner. Right. The two wild spinner will become a, a direct spinner. spinner, but not a Majorana spinner. So, if I wanted to describe a Majorana particle, um, the Majorana spinner is the same thing, right? Yeah, but there's a reality condition. Yeah, yeah, but upon, upon a reality condition, yes. Okay. So, it's 
this, okay, so just, just think of it as a direct spinner and that may or may not impose a reality. Exactly, exactly. Okay with the freedom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the natural thing that you know, this whole language is saying uh, the, the, the relation between the massive M2 and the massive M2 become very manifest. Uh, you can think uh, is uh, the, the lambda has, a, has a two spin degree freedom, uh, plus one half and minus one half. But uh, I can choose, this is our convention, but I can always choose this, this is lambda i is the spin along the momentum. It's not only about the spin, but it's spin along the momentum, which means given a frame, Lambda one half will become lambda. Uh, uh, sorry, lambda plus one half will will become a plus intensity, and a lambda minus one half will become minus intensity. I choose in the energy limit. We always know that that, that uh, the 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 minus one half will scale like a root e, and the plus one half lambda plus one half will scale like a m divided by root e. This does tells you the lambda essentially in the UV will corresponding to the negative helicity state, negative massless helicity state, and lambda tilde plus one half will, co will uh, uh, corresponding to the, the plus uh, helicity uh, final state in the UV. This make a, a connection between UV and IR. For example, you, if you have some uh, UV amplitude, you can, you can follow some procedure to deform to the IR amplitude. Another way you have the L amplitude, you can take the energy limit to obtain the UV, 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 UV amplitude. But basically, the, the rule is a, is a lambda really carries some minus, minus one half helicity weight, and the lambda tilde really carry on some plus one half helicity rule. Of course, uh, we will see some, there some subtlety here, but uh, in this language, you will say we can bolt the amplitude and unbolt the amplitude. I think you're playing to old timers, you would want to. Put an alpha dot on your lambda tilde because they know that's the. Ah, uh, exactly. Sorry. Right. Exactly. I should have put the lambda lambda tilde alpha dot because this is a uh, as you to say complex uh, conjugate representation as you to say. Yes, you're right. Is alpha dot? Yes. Okay. We may have stop for any question about the clarification of all the conventions I used. Okay, Is it consistent with the Hegel convention? Yes. It's consistent with these two component uh, seminar techniques. Yes. Uh, people may people may use in different convention, but here I think uh, I'm I'm for, I'm using closing the same notation as at Hegel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Nima convention is a little bit complicated. Uh, uh, uh hey, hey, hey may use in uh, I'm, uh, okay, my commission is not the same as the new commission. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. So then, after I introduce some techniques, some, uh, some uh, uh, seminar variables, the massive one or massive seminar variables to make this good transformation manifest, uh, next I will discuss, uh, then we will go on to discuss some arm shell three particle massive samples. So uh, before I talk about the massive one, I want to, I want to say, uh, I want to say uh, a little bit of massless one because the massless one, everything becomes sim uh, uh, simplified and uh, you can derive a lot of interesting consequences. So let's say the, 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 the unshell three particle mass amplitude uh, or saying is, uh, is completely fixed by momentum conservation, needs group scaling and smooth limit for real momentum. Uh, because uh, uh, we are talking about this unshell three particle mass amplitude, we are really in the complex momentum scheme. Uh, every momentum is in the complex. Uh, and uh, plus, uh, there's a three condition. Uh, there, there are only two possibilities. The first probability is uh, for if the sum helicity larger than zero, then you, you have the square bracket because it's a plus helicity weight. And uh, the sum helicity smaller than zero, you have the angular bracket because it's a negative helicity weight. So, uh, and of course, they are related by, by uh, P transformation. If you want, you can do it by CBT transformation. Uh, but basically, you have you have two two possibilities. This unique structure, we'll see. The unique structure put a lot of constraint on 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 the pos on the possible interaction you, you can have uh, at the IR. Let's say let's say we let's say focus on we call it the marginal three particle amplitudes, which means uh, the sum of the helicity equals plus minus one. In this limit, uh, the coupling is dimensionless. 
So well, let's take a saying either, uh, we will take uh, H1 plus H2 plus H3 equals one. Let's take this limit. So I'm sure that become very simple is one minus HI. You see the highest the weight is always one minus two HI. What it tells you is uh, if there is a uh, spin one or higher spin particle get involved, you must have severe pulls, which means you have, you have some, uh, some, some spinner uh, uh, product in the denominator. What does it mean is, uh, is, uh, is saying, okay, I want to make a little good transformation manifest, but if it's a higher spin particle, you should, uh, you also have this, uh, this consequence saying, you have some nine local structure. It seems the nine, nine spiral on the poles, but eventually the spiral on the poles should be, should be canceled. We we'll really talk about this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, Mikowski space. Uh, but, but, but I'm trying to say. Matt, sorry, I got confused. With okay. Something simple. Some of the aces is one. That is, that makes it coupling one here. Like spin half, spin half is zero. Spin half, spin half, spin zero, dimension is zero. Coupling dimension. So you call it coupling, right? Spin half, spin half, spin one. Spin half, spin half, spin one is also zero. The coupling dimension, I mean, the dimension, I mean, the coupling dimension. What I call is the marginal, so part of the MQ that we are saying is the marginal interaction. The coupling is dimension, the dimension of coupling is zero. The mass dimension of the coupling is zero. One half plus one half plus one is two, not one. Oh, you're saying that way. Oh, no, no, no. But, but, uh, okay. Okay. It's a, that, no, no, that, that one, in the marginal one, is a plus one half minus one half plus minus one. That is one corresponding to the standard model cases. The one you're talking about is how dimension operator. Because we're doing all incoming or all incoming. Exactly. Okay. I'm talking all incoming. I think what you're talking about is really dipole operator. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay. Then uh, now I will go through all the three uh, part. So what, what exactly is the condition of a, a, a stereo pole just means any pole in a C function? You're saying that yes. you require no poles. Uh, it's very important you see, um, uh, 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 because you are in the complex momentum, right. you have some poles, but, but, but uh, you, you, we know that in, 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 the, in the real momentum, everything goes to zero. So if I said, I can't set, put all the particles on cell uh, uh, with real momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying if I put, so I'm just, what is exactly the, I'm just asking, what exactly is the requirement of no serious poles? No, no, uh, uh, the requirement is no, no poles at the four particle. And uh, you, you, you should have preserved locality at, at the four particle, at, yeah, at, at I mean, the particle. I, I don't necessarily see that. By just looking at the three points. No, no, you cannot see that. But at three point, you have poles. Can't you take two momentum be real? And then one of those would have a serious pole? No, everything should be complex. I think, everything? I, yeah, everything should be complex. Uh, uh, I think you need that everything to be complex. So, yeah. so real mm -hmm. momentum is also valid. Yeah. So I mean, just another way to say it would just be that if you don't, if you just do the little loop scaling and momentum conservation, you already end up with a unique structure. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you will find that if you take the some of the helicities too large, you will later find when you do four point functions that you have unphysical poles. Uh, I should say, uh, uh, you 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 will find the three particle. Uh, has a severe as poles. You you see. I think I can I can give you some example. Is that uh, so that max hi is less than Yeah. If you take the let's say h three equal to one, let's say take a plus one half or minus one half one. If this thing is one, that the pole in this structure one two. So that what call is a severe as poles. Okay. So just there's just poles. In yeah. The yeah. Exactly, that pose, you know, that's why they say. But, but, but like, eventually, you want to build a four point amplitude out of the three point amplitude. You will see the requirement of locality and the entirety mm -hmm. because of the presence of the pose, 
you see is only possible for 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 a specific interaction. Right. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Max eight. HI. Less than one. Less than you just say we should reverse the inequality. No, larger than larger or equal to one. Larger than one. Then you're saying you get the bad thing when it's big. Yeah. You're saying you want the good thing when it's small. It's the same thing. Uh, and I'm trying to say you have bad thing. You have now this means that you have the bad thing. Okay. Uh, because let's say if H is three equal to one, this and this is satisfied, you have to impose in one, two. So that's what I mean. Yeah. So that's why it's either dramatic difference between spin one particle and a spin one half and a spin zero. Okay, now I will go through all the three particle, uh, uh, three particle on shell massive amplitude uh, considered in, in this work. Uh, first of all, I will consider a scalar fermion fermion, fermion uh, mm, uh, amplitude, uh, but I also print out this is uh, this a uh, Lagrangian to, to, to match the coefficient. In principle, I can write down the amplitude directly without referring to any Lagrangian, but I want to match the coefficient such that uh, everything becomes clear. So, so uh, I also surprise the the, the, the uh, fermion indices, which means uh, that the H and the H uh, and the coefficient H is the matrix in the fermion index in this space space. So. Uh, so basically, uh, for this uh, uh, fermion, fermion scalar interaction, uh, uh, they are very simple. There's no subtlety. You see, you, you can just starting from this uh, this hundred limit, then you both it, you get the R amplitude. You starting from especially you mean the flavor index? Yeah, flavor index. You mean you have to have flavor index? I have I have arbitrary number of scalar, arbitrary number of fermion. I will show now our massive uh, uh, vectors. Yeah. But for, for, for simplicity, I, I surprise this uh, formula in this. Uh, and H is just a coupling constant. The H is not H field. H is a coupling constant. The notation that uh, the tongue wall is using, I'm, I'm just using the same notation. H is a coupling constant. Uh, the, the two terms are released by parity. Uh, the not, the not, nothing is subtle here because you can, you can easily say once you have your way, you both need to get an R. Once you have an R, you go to 100 limit and both to unbold. Very simple. But uh, I think it will be very right, like, complicated when you consider spin one particle. Here I consider the spin one uh, arbitrary number of spin one particle, uh, arbitrary number of fermion. This is, is a coupling. This is a coupling matrix in the in the, in the fermion basis. Oh, but we will see that some, some interesting happen. In, let's say in the IR, I see there is some mass singular singularity, which means the way M1 goes to zero, there is a singular. But uh, in the UV, you have some spherical pole. Well, you see, you have one spherical pole in, 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 the, in, the, in the square, square spin product, uh, and you have one mass singularity. And uh, in, in this way, you, you have to do a little bit of work and to, to uh, for, for example, but you can also study from this UV amplitude. You're following some procedure, you deform to this bolded version, but you have to do some extra work because you have this, this mass singular, sing, singularity. But, but it's, it's a bit forward. I'm not, I'm not showing into a detail, but what I'm trying to say uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, you will see for, for any spin one particle, for mass this one, the amplitude has a severe impulse, for the massive one, the amplitude has a mass singularity. So this, this, this you will see, uh, uh, see things clear. And also, you can see this object, single object, also consider a scalar fermion fermion interaction. So I'm a little confused about the square root poles again because yeah. the, obviously the interaction that you're writing down is 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 allowed. I mean that's just a, a gauge interaction. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, if I look at the three point function, it has a pole. Yeah, because this is complex momentum. Yeah. So, but before I thought. You said that we were trying to avoid these poles. So these poles are okay. They're okay. Because you're going to, when you finally require that they cancel, then you get gauge invariance, right? Uh, this this poles are okay in the sense that uh, I'm talking about in the compound momentum. Yeah. In the real momentum, there's no pole as a part of the That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But I mean, this, this spurious pole, you're going to force to cancel. Right? At a four point. At the four point. Yeah, I, I, will show, I will show you an example. Right. Yeah. 
And, and also you see this single object also consider a scalar uh, a form of formal interaction uh, and, uh, and determined, uh, the, determined by this uh, mass of the, the, the formula and, and the mass of this, uh, uh, this um, vector and also this, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, coupling matrix L and R. If you look at this immediately, you will see, okay, this is a Higgs mechanism, right? They, they are saying, okay, if, if this is the gate coupling, this is the mass, this is the relation tells you the longitudinal component of W, uh, 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 the formal interaction is equal to the formula, proportional to the formal mass divided by V. That's basically the, the Higgs mechanism. But uh, this way to say, uh, people are saying that this way is uh, we can understand the following uh, relation is that you, you, you can think about you starting from this amplitude, you IR deform to do, 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 do this uh, as as you two little group transmission uh, covariate object. You immediately say this object contain a scalar form from interaction determined by his mechanism. They say oh, you you can the uh, uh, is referring to this procedure as saying the Higgs mechanism as, as a uh, as a saying, as I R unification of different components of your way amplitude to a single object. But, but uh, here, uh, uh, I, want, I just want to, to, to say that you can just run down the amplitude and uh, you can take a energy limit, you will immediately see the Hayes mechanism structure. Or you can see it goes in Kerlin theorem, the longitudinal component that becomes scalar degree freedom of your way. Okay, the next component I'll consider the vector scalar scalar interaction. Uh, mm, uh, again, for any interaction involved with one particle, you have the mass singularity, you have the uh, nothing special. Uh, I think that's all. But of course, you, uh, this interaction, you will also have this uh, uh, quartic scalar coupling. But, but, but since I'm focusing on two, two scattering, uh, I will not discover, discuss about the quartic Higgs coupling and, and, and the quartic scalar coupling and, and, uh, and the cubic scalar coupling. They will consider cubic scalar coupling, sorry, cubic scalar coupling. I'm not going to discuss it because uh, at the two-two scattering, they will not lead to uh, perturbative unitary violation. Uh, so I will just focus on this this uh, this, this energy limit. Yeah. So uh, same way you can you know you can talk you can talk about the vector scalar scale interaction. Uh, you you'll see is a is a one mass singularity. Uh, okay, of course. Of course, I, I, here I, I put the M2, but in the UV, the coupling also M2, uh, because to, to, I want to match uh, this interaction, because in, in principle, this interaction is the proper proportional to the mass. Okay, but, but now, now mind, just notation. You can see immediately is a, is a, you, you have this uh, uh, mass singularity, you have the spherical. So is there, is there a claim that, so if, if I, is it, is, it, is, it a, is it a general thing that if I start with some, massless amplitude mm -hmm. and then I simply bold it yeah that I'm going to get the most general general massive amplitude that has that as a pi energy limit uh here in this work I'm talking the marginal I'm talking the marginal say doesn't work for doesn't work for for higher dimension operators. uh yeah yeah you claiming yeah it is working uh but but uh, this not the uh I, I, I'm, I'm okay. I did not do uh, the all the things, yeah. Uh, uh, but here, uh, uh, definitely, for if I only consider marginal, marginal, I mean the coupling the dimension is zero. Uh, the marginal coupling, a uh, uh, marginal or relevant, you can see the data one is the relevant coupling, marginal relevant coupling, this is always true. And you know that because you have another way of checking it, or it's because I have the Lagrangian check it. Right? Yeah, it's really coming from the Lagrangian, you're just rewriting it. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's the way I can check it. Okay. Yeah, this, this tells you that uh, the, uh, this immediately tells you the interaction between the scalar and the double W should be proportional to the, the mass of the, of, of the W. Otherwise, there's no UV amplitude. Because in the UV, we mean we take the M goes to zero, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This immediately tells you the interaction to the proportion to the mass of the particle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this is, a, if you want, this is Higgs mechanism, right? But, uh, but uh, you can see is uh, by, I think the whole idea is uh, by employing the little group transformation, covariant transformation, 
you can control this object and you will and R, you see the single object will contain different, how do you say the amplitude in your way and, and the coupling follow the Python that Higgs mechanism. This is the way we are seeing. If I wanted to understand that one of our M2 purely in this, lang in this language, yeah. could I try to argue, is it somehow, is that factor of M2 somehow required for the dimensions? Or in other words, the helicity structure tells me the dependence on the brackets, right? Uh, yeah, sure, you, you, the, okay, by dimensional analysis, yes. But you can, but you can also see in this way, kind of proportional to the mass of the scalar, but in not the case. I think, yeah. Uh, is it okay? So again, I mean, I know that that M2 Oh, oh yeah, you are right. Just because I've done the textbook analysis in terms of the Lagrangian then, I mean, I'm just trying to understand what you're buying from all of this formalism, right? And mm -hmm. so- I, I got a question, very good point, very good point. Uh, as far as I can say, I can only see from this. Okay, suppose I starting from this formalism. I forgot about this M two. I redefine my coupling coefficient. It is uh, it's still okay. I think. Uh, wait, I let it see. Uh, I would have thought that you would just define it somehow in the U V. In U V, you just have whatever you have. No, I I, I want to. And then you I, I want you have a smooth limit in the UV. I want I want your amplitude has a smooth limit. Comes when you make the connection to the IR. Yes, exactly. Right. So somehow you could you should discover that M when you try to require that it has a good IR limit as a, from a massive amplitude. Yeah. Uh, I think one way to see it, uh, you see, you know, uh, from from this one, I can see that one uh, the the particle one is the plus one has to be. But they can also consider the other one, the particle two is plus ITD, then this one should be M1. Then combine all the different uh, high state M2, uh, you will say this should be M1, M2. Maybe this is not uh, good enough, but uh, this is one way we can, we can do it. No, I'm really confused. Go on. How do you define a zero helicity to match its limits for the gauge boson? Who's the gauge boson? It's, it's a massive vector. Sorry, sorry. The on, on the right, that amplitude is supposed to be a massive right now. You mean this one? Well, it's the, the amplitude, amplitude on the right. Limit. It's the higher energy limit. So I, uh, I didn't call that question. Yeah. Sorry. But, but, uh, but this is the massive one. Massive one can have plus identity, minus identity, and zero identity. Uh, yeah. Right side, on the right side, massive is the amplitude, right? This is massive amplitude. Uh, you have one plus two zero, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think John was asking about you have a massive amplitude of two zero. Why not? Because it's a longitudinal component. Yeah, you're not saying it's scalar, right? So instead of scalar, I'm trying to just scalar scalar and then create. Yes, yes, you found it. Okay, sure, sure. Yes. Well, that's my question. Okay, okay. Let's see some more detail. I study from this object. This object contain every possible helicity conjugation, right? You contain for for this uh, for the two particle, it have plus plus one helicity, plus minus one helicity, and zero helicity. I'm I'm seeing. For the massive case, I can still talking about the helicity amplitude. I still don't understand the massive case. So particle one has helicity one. No, particle one in the massive case has been one. Helicity is the component that's been along the massive. Helicity is the, so can be zero plus one minus one for massive vector boson. So I thought that label on the right says you're picking out a particular spin combination. Is that not correct? I'm taking a particular helicity configuration of the particle. Um, then I take the energy limit. Maybe the way to say it is in the low energy limit, the thing that he's writing there has all possible helicities in it. Yeah, all possible helicity configuration. In the higher energy limit, he's looking at a particular choice of helicity. Because in the higher energy limit, the different helicities correspond to very different amplitudes, right? Yeah. So the low energy amplitude. You could use that for helicity zero, helicity one, helicity minus one vectors. 
is this made done one example in the higher energy? Yeah, you have a, a lot of possibility for them, but I think you, you can have so, no, yeah, this is you're it's assuming the Higgs mechanism for that. No, I'm not assuming the Higgs mechanism. So, how do you take the high energy limit of the longest sequence gate, for example? I'm starting from uh, but you, you agree that's only one structure. Okay, that's only one structure from this M2. Let's pretend we understand why there's only one structure. Yeah, <laughs> then, then I'm, I'm trying uh, then uh, the one thing is that why, how do you add in M1, M2, right? That's, that's your question? No. Take that structure, take yeah. the high energy limit of the gauge boson. Just uh, you do some algebra to get that right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You let's say from this right in the bold one to some linear combination of the bold one, why why go like zero or you yeah 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 then you be composing too many components wow well, then exactly yeah. Yeah. okay I should say this one carry index i this bold version say um I should say from the beginning this bold version this one is a carry index i1 this one carry index i2 yeah so in the high energy limit mm -hmm. the longitudinal peak of the spin one become a one scalar over, have a one over energy progression yes that's why that is a mass singularity here but that's not an energy that's a mass well, just like okay. in the equivalence theorem you know if you have uh, an energy growth E over N, you can say that that's an energy growth E large with six M, or you could say M goes to zero with six E is the mass singularity, right? It's, they're both the same thing. But uh, let's say this, but you, you, let's say if, if we take the, if I want to choose the one as a plus one helicity, this one, I say the, the Square bracket has helicity one half. The angular bracket has helicity minus one half. If we want to choose the plus one, you need to choose the, this one should be plus one half. This one is also plus one half. Then you get the mass inversion. You, the, uh, you, you want to convert the angular bracket to square bracket, you, have, you need to have, okay, I can do it this way. Let's do it this way. Here, if, if, a, you, if you're studying a square bracket, the, the bold version, to be a square bracket in the UV is fine. There's no mass suppression. But if you want to take 100 millimeter to get a minus, minus, minus helicity of this one, you need to have M suppression. That's why the, you have the cancel the minus singularity. Yeah, I don't see any E's in the formula. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, that's the, the, the bracket bracket for like three. I, I think it should be some cancel some momentum calculation. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So, uh, so, so some one more question. Yeah. So spin one, spin one scalar. Yeah. That's the dimension three operator. Okay. So why does it have a dimension of couple? Yeah. Dimension. That's what the dimension for. Dimensionless couple. Like no, I'm going to choose the relevant and the marginal. Sorry, I should be more specific. All right, continue. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm considering the relevant and the marginal. Let's say this way, relevant marginal. You want that in, in, in the generalizable company. OK, then the, the I think the, this is the final one. Oh, this is maybe the final one. Then I consider the, the vector vector like uh, this, this, uh, this interaction. What is this? And uh, one thing, uh, 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 very simple of all this uh, um, thing is, uh, okay, now in the UV, you have two sphere on poles. In the IR, you have two minus singularity. This is, this is very nice. And, uh, mm, uh, and another thing I found to, to mention is that uh, from this structure, you immediately see uh, if you want the one, two, three, satisfy both symmetry, you want to use change every possible one, two, three permutation, then this coefficient should be fully anti-symmetric. This is, this is uh, very, 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 okay, I'll say, it is a very uh, 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 convenient way to derive this CEBC fully anti-symmetric. 
because even you acting uh, at the uh, Russian term like this, CABC can be anything you like. But uh, when you want to match to the UV amplitude, you're saying, okay, I take the IR amplitude, I want to match to the UV amplitude, I want to require the UV amplitude uh, matching to this one, this, this coefficient should be fully anti-symmetric. The other tells you this should be some coupling. We will see this should have some uh, structure constant for V algebra, but we'll see this. Another dumb question. Go on. Sorry. On the left hand side, one and two have only angle, or sorry, two has only angle bracket. Yes. One and three have one angle and one square. Yes. So what's the difference between like two special? You have no, you, you have thickly the permutation term. Fine. So this is thickly the permutation term. And what, what rules out having that last one with square bracket have angle bracket instead? Uh, you may say why this cannot be angular bracket? Yeah. Because if I use this angular bracket, I will see this, this, this one will correspond to irrelevant coupling in the UV. Let's say if I take a one, two, this is angular bracket, I take a hand limit, you see immediately that this one will be e to the cubic. Uh, that I do not want. I wanted the, the three part of M2 that should be out of E at the most. You're just showing us the raw behavior. Yes. Yeah. In principle, uh, you, you can forget about this, this term. You, you can start all the basis of the three part of M2. Then you require the, uh, all the combinations satisfy tree unitarity, which means that the high limit should, uh, uh, should be smaller than out of E. Then this one is a unique structure. I assume that you can also rewrite as one square, one angle bracket, two square bracket. Exactly, okay. that is the identity. Okay. This one, two, two angular bracket, one square bracket will be equal to two square bracket, one angular bracket. Okay. That is the identity there. Okay. But this identity can be very easily to see in the UV, but it's very difficult to see in the IR, but it's possible to show you. You can also prove it, but if you take this, the, 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 the guideline volume, if I have a structure in, in the IR, I take all the possible helicity uh, amplitude in the UV. These two structures correspond to the same coefficient say, and say the same helicity amplitude in the UV. They must be the identity in the IR. That, 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 that's the logic that can, guide, can guide you to something. So you, you say you can show that the is within the last one, but it's exactly. Uh, it's not complicated, but you, you need to have this unit shorting identity. You need to be clever enough. Or you can use brute force to, to buy numerical um, method. But, 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 but you can use shorting identity to be very clever to show, to change it to, to the angle. Did you show that in your paper? We did not show it, but we, we, have the, we, have, we have our notes. It is all in our notes. <laughs> Are you going to show the notes? No, no. Here. We are already 50 pages. It's too long already. So, yeah, so it doesn't come in. <laughs> we'll see. But, but, but it's also show your other paper. So you, you, it's either been proved in your paper. So we, we, we do not want to. Is your paper longer than Cornwall's paper? Sure. Probably. Yeah. Uh, that paper is only 10, 10 pages. Cornwall's paper. So which method is simpler? Uh, uh, we, we are using different uh, perspective, right? Uh, simpler, okay. Uh, I think the, the thing is, uh, this one is more, more, uh, more straightforward, right? You, you, uh, uh, the, the advantage of this, uh, this uh, unshared way is saying you are using complex momentum and analytical continuation into complex momentum, which are saying you, you, are, you, you can talk about this unshared three particle amplitude and talk about this uh, uh, relation with. Uh, with, with, with relation with, with this uh, matrix amplitude, uh, you, you can possibly show some something mm -hmm. already. And uh, that one is not clear. In Conrad's Lagrange approach, everything is derived by two, two scaling. For example, the, the CABC is fully anti-symmetric. This is determined by the required double-double scaling uh, uh, tree unitarity on a double-double scaling. But here I will say the three-party one-shot amplitude, you will have it. 
this is why advantage of this onshore program. You already see, for example, you can you already see here, you already see his mechanism, right? For example, if you if you take this this limit, you already see there is a scalar uh, a formula formula interaction in the UV, and the coefficient is, is, is fixed by the mass and the coupling. And and, uh, and also, sorry. Yeah, also this one. Oh, you, you, you also uh, show this one, this structure, also consider a uh, 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 mass with vector, uh, scalar scalar interaction with, with this uh, dependence uh, on, on the mass of the particle. Uh, if if uh, you are using this convolved approach, this identity you need to work a little bit algebra. But here you just uh, you are using the fact that there's only one structure in the IR. You take the uh, uh, energy limit. You immediately obtain this definition. That's the advantage. Can you remind us why the folded spinners can't be in this denominator? The bolded spinners are, are actually tensors, right? They have these. Um, bolded spinners are, ten, are tensors and are, are zero two, yes. Uh, I cannot imagine. Uh, usually, if you scale up in the, in the demonitor, it's okay, right? Uh, if transformation at the phase is okay, but it's, uh, this is a uh, tensor, yes. Marcus and Marcus. Yeah. Well, you cry at the beginning. The, 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 the tensile index that should be contracted in the denominator. Yeah, so. Is it not contracted here? Which one is contracted? Uh, this one? No, no, no. All the indices are, are, are arbitrary, not, con not contracted. But if you took well, some... I, you mean you could cap capital I, J, R. Yeah, for example, this one corresponding to I1, I2, they are completely symmetrized, but they are arbitrary. But the only is uh, the spinner index are compacted. Okay. So you made one invariant out of all these tensors. Uh. Then you can just factor these into something. Uh, yes, about that, okay. uh, I think you're, you're saying, for example, I can contract this one to this one. Uh, you, you, if you contract everything, you, did, you, you, you will see that will be a, a function of momentum. But that we do not want. But what I'm trying to say is that we do not want to come like this. Not a lot of parameter. No, no, no. That, 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 that become mass. Yeah, that become mass. Yes. What I'm trying to say, if you want some index contraction denominator, they become mass. Because, uh, because uh, you know, uh, they, they, are, they are satisfied on shell condition. Every scalar product the momentum. It, 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 it can be written on some the function of mass. If I only have one particle, I made an invariant out of three particles, it would necessarily be a mass, would it? Can I say it again? There you go. I, have, I make some complicated invariants involving spinners corresponding mm. to more than one particle. Mm. If there was only one particle, then it would have to be a mass. But... No, but you, you, the three particles, three momentum should be all, they're all on shell, right? Yeah. But... Any scale of product momentum should be functional mass. Yeah, but once I have four particles, then I can make S, T, U, and yes, yes, three yes. masses. Yeah, that, that, that's true. But, 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 but uh, when I drop down the on shell massive amplitude, I impose on shell condition. That's my definition. Yeah. So Eventually, they give the same answer. It could be a spurious hole in S, for example, that then cancels. Like the spurious holes on the right hand side, you're allowing spurious holes on the right hand side. Yeah, but but the spurious as a pole, as I said, it's just the, the function of mass, right? I can and I drop it down directly using mass. Why not? Why uh, why should I write down p1 dot p2? For example, you are saying okay, I think you are saying to say why I cannot write down because it's only three particles. Yeah. Then I can write down this function of mass. Okay. 
that is your thing, right? When, if I have denominator of contraction of the indexes, you always get a scalar product of momentum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is kind of all using that function of math. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the answer is because of the three points. Yes, exactly. Because of the three points. Um, mm, but uh, at the form point, uh, we just uh, impose this term another present. We want a local term on the four point. That's that's uh, uh, what I'm saying is uh, at the three point we allow zero and pose, but at the four point we do not allow any any pose because that is not a zero and pose because that pole will become a real pole in the real momentum, right? Yeah, that's that, that's why. They, 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 yes, you're right. This three particle because. Oh, let's, let's go beyond the three. Let's go beyond the three particle amplitude. Once you have this unshell three particle unshell amplitude, uh, you can you can you can calculate that this uh, uh, four particle unshell amplitude using the entirety and locality. What I mean is, uh, um, entirety tells you when the internal propagator, let's say, when some some momentum, some of the some momentum go unshell, the the numerator should be factorized to three unshell amplitude. This, this is the entirety. Uh, we call it the consistent factorization. And the uh, locality tells you you only have simple poles. That, 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 that's the two, two, two things you can determine. Let, let, let's give an example of massively particle you know, at, at, at the uh, uh, preliminary uh, exercise. Uh, we can see the self interacting massive particle, the, the spin, we have spin S massive particles. Then for the procedure, we can say, okay, let's calculate the, the, the residual of the S channel. You can think, you will see, because the presence of zero and pole, the residue of the S channel has a U channel pole here. This, this, is, very, uh, this is very annoying. If you want some uh, consistent factorization, uh, uh, for example, you also you, you require the U channel uh, uh, also factorize uh, uh, um, along the three part of amplitude. Um, you, you, you require the consistent factorization, you will see uh, very constrained on the possible interaction of the self interaction uh, uh, particles, uh, at least something. Uh, but the analysis that require the consistent factorization, so all, all you can say, the cancellation of the zero and poles, you can show the consistent interaction of one particles or must have young mu structure. This, this you, can, you can show, which means, okay. And the second one is uh, the spin two self interaction cannot have non trivial future, future, future. It means that uh, the universal, you know, universality. Uh, you can also uh, to derive the no consistent the theory of self interacting higher spin method particle are not possible. Because you, when you have higher spin particle, you have more spin on the poles, uh, you will see it's not possible to satisfy consistent factorization. Uh, I, I will not show. You can't have a renormalized source. Yes, same way. It's already not a normalized source. Yes. Uh, you you same way okay it's a different argument. Uh, 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 probably I will also go through this. Uh, by including the gravity, uh, you you will immediately see this uh, uh, spin three half particle must have Susie. Otherwise, uh, it, it will not be consistent. And uh, there's no higher spin uh, massively uh, higher spin particles. So what I'm trying to understand is somehow you're saying. Can't, you can't have effective theories of spin three halves and spin two parts, spin four particles, or whatever spin you want. Yeah. So what is the exact statement that what what is not allowed? Effective theory with the arbitrary spin is allowed. I think so. Uh, no, uh, I'm trying to say is uh, uh, this this tells you. Uh, let me see. Uh, this, for example, uh, you, can add, you, can, you can write down spin three half particles, right? Interaction. You can write down all possible effective theory. Let's say you can write down some interaction between spin three halves. But, uh, but uh, uh, at some point, uh, you will violate your entirety and uh, all some locality. That's why you need a SUSI. So that's what I'm trying to say. Or it's allowed, but, but it must have a SUSI. You could just have a spin three half bound state. So the, the, the no, 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 I'm talking math this one, sorry. I'm talking math this one, which means I'm talking in the, in the arbitrary UV. Yeah, yes? Yeah. The answer see, yes. to the massive case is that if, if you can't have a massless particle 
it means that if you have a massive one, the cutoff of that theory has to go to uh, has to go to zero as the mass gets zero. In other words, the, yeah, the exactly, exactly. scales with some positive power of the mass of the particle itself. So you could still have an effective theory, you know, but it, it, it's different from, it's not that the cutoff is set by wherever new physics wants to come in, it's set by the mass of the particle itself. Yeah. Well, it scales. It scales it would be higher than the mass. So like with okay. gravity, with sig two, with whatever, one third or something like that, yeah. there's a scale, the minimum scaling, depending on how crazy you're willing to be, is some low power of the mass maybe, but it's still, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'm trying to say the mass is just being three half. You need a zero symmetry, which means uh, I want you want to extrapolate the scale to to some wide Planck scale, for example. You need a Susi come in, and uh, also if you have you cannot have higher spin two particles. Mass is higher spin or coupled to gravity. That's not not allowed. Mass is one. I mean, mass is one. Okay. Mass, sorry, mass is one. I should say, mass is one. Mass is. You of course you can have this. Uh, 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 infinite has been particle in the spin theory, but uh, that is not a method. Okay, now I gotta go to the second half of my talk. I will say what I mean by tree, tree level unitarity and why, how do we calculate this uh, on shell for particle massive amplitude. So, the, the tree level unitarity tells you for the n particles getting amplitude at the fixed angle, uh, the, 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 the energy going behavior should be at the most e to the 4 minus n. This is my definition of tree level unitarity, which tells you for three particle is the most order E, for four particle should be constant. Of course, uh, up to logarithmic factors. That, that, that's the uh, definition of tree, tree level unitarity. Uh, I think I, 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 John uh, suggested to me uh, to talk about the, the tree unitarity and the reversibility. He's saying, why would you want to change the unitarity? Because uh, once you validate the tree unitarity at the tree level, at the loop level, it works because uh, uh, by optical theorem, the, the uh, one loop is a uh, corresponding to the tree square, which means uh, we, we, which means that if you have some uh, uh, tree unitary violating instruction uh, at the tree level, uh, the loop level will become more much worse and worse and worse. And then uh, uh, this uh, increase in violated probability at, high, at higher loops, the theory become uh, uh, you can say is not realizable. But in the mounting language, you can also say the, uh, the scale, the cutoff is very low. Yeah, this is basically what we're seeing. If we want a very high cutoff, we, we want to impose the tree unitarity. Okay, for, for the massive one, you, you, uh, for the massive one, you only need uh, this uh, consistent factorization. But for the uh, massive one, you, you need, a, you need a, a contact term. Uh, you need a, you, you, uh, for example, you, you, are, you can calculate the residue, you will find some energy gradient behavior, then you, you, you're adding on contact term to, to satisfy tree unitarity. This is our procedure. We, we're starting from a three particle on-shell amplitude, while we're gluing them together, and, uh, and, and we calculate the residue, uh, then, we, 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 then we're adding some contact term with the arbitrary coefficient, then we impose the tree unitarity. All the coefficients are fixed. This, this is the procedure. Of course, of course, at here, from three particle on shell amplitude, because the on shell condition, you can you can draft the uh, the amplitude in different ways because there is, there is a lot of identity there. But but uh, that is only reflected to the coefficient of the, of the contact term. In other words, you can start in your three particle on shell amplitude arbitrarily any way you like uh, for three particle on shell amplitude. Then then the, uh, the coefficient of contact term uh, will be different. So we, we can I'll take some example like gauge boson cycle on calculate double double scaling. Uh, then yeah, you immediately will see by, by, by this power content, the energy power content you immediately see uh, this one will have e to the fourth energy going behavior, e to the cubic energy going behavior, and e to the square energy going behavior. We, we will see uh, first of all for e to the fourth, the longitudinal longitudinal scaling, of course, it's coming from the longitudinal longitudinal scaling. And, uh, uh, they for the e to the fourth, you, you add a contact term, and the coefficient say is determined by c times c. And uh, for for e to the cubic, the uh, appear in the plus minus at least zero 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 at least the amplitude in the way, and you 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 found the Jacobian identity. 
which means the, the Jacobian identity is a consequence of two unitarity. Of course, you have this grammar you can hear for Latino, Latino scaling is well known. We need something else. We need something that appear here, maybe some four factor. You know, but uh, we, we want to, uh, let's say, we want to uh, respect the, the, the video unitarity and uh, we import the Higgs mechanism you know, we add some scalar degree freedom or, or we add a mean and, uh, and uh, this will, uh, and then we want, we, we want to cancel the least square energy green behavior or double double scaling in the previous result. And then we will see the emergence of group structure. I'll talk about uh, uh, in more detail here, what's it mean by emergence of group structure. First of all, first of all, is that in the UV, I only have transverse uh, vector boson. And in the, in, in the in, uh, for the scalar degree freedom, I have this physical scalar difference. In the sense, I have Higgs. And I have this boson boson, longitudinal component of scalar difference, uh, sorry, longitudinal component uh, of W boson. Then I group them together to, to a, a, a scalar field. Uh, you, 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 you will see uh, that uh, the coupling, let's say, the coupling uh, coming from different, different uh, resources will, uh, will, will become the generator of the Lie group. And uh, if you calculate longitude, longitude, longitude phi phi or all this uh, uh, scalar amplitude, you, you require tree unitarity, you will see the, 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 the satisfy some of the algebra. Uh, I think I'm saying, uh, uh, maybe it, uh, if you remember saying, this one coming from three Matthew, uh, three W Matthew M2. That one contain a transverse W and two scalar amplitude. And this one uh, coming from scalar uh, vector vector amplitude at IR. And this one coming from uh, 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 vector scalar scalar amplitude. I'm trying to say in the, in the IR, you have different Matthew on shell amplitude can give rise to the scalar, uh, to the vector scalar scalar amplitude. And all the coefficients, they are unified to a single Lie algebra. And that is uh, we are saying well, what we mean by okay by by the group structure of the Lie algebra is is is, is uh, show up as a consequence of tree unitarity. Uh, I think this is uh, the the very nice part, the very nice uh, part of the result of this convert paper. Um, uh, it's saying okay, what we we get this uh, we say every particle is is some kind of uh, group structure, uh, maybe it is because of the tree unitarity. Okay, we can continue go on in terms of, sorry, we can continue uh, go on including the formula or saying the W W the formula, formula scaling, um, we, uh, we follow the same procedure is uh, that we, we glue, we glue in the three particle on shell M2 together, we, we put back the uh, uh, simple pose and we calculate the, uh, uh, this uh, factorizable part, uh, factorizable part of the uh, four particle on shell amplitude. This is S channel Y, this is P channel Y. You, you see that is a triple gauge boson coupling here. And uh, you, 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 uh, from this stage, you, 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 you can choose this, this, you calculate this helicity conversation. You have E square energy gain behavior. Uh, for tree, you uh, impose the tree entirety, you obtain the algebra. Which means that if you want this, uh, 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 the formula, sorry, if you want, you want the formula, formula vector interaction satisfy tree entirety, you need the, the coupling matrix to, to, to satisfy some group, group algebra, B algebra. So you can go on, we'll call it. So C can be different for that. No, they must be same because of this. But here I only show R, but uh, this 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 one can also have uh, uh, L in, in interaction. But here you right, right might see. Right hand fermions don't couple to SP two. Hmm? Right hand fermions don't couple to SP two. No, I'm talking about arbitrary. In that particular limit, uh, the R equals zero. Yeah, that's good. No, uh, um, uh, oh, you, you must be the same. You just say, you, you just say, uh, this is zero, this is uh, uh, automatically satisfied. 
not transitive. The structure constant of SU2 should be the same. I'm trying to say in standard model, the right handed formula uh, satisfies this relation automatically because R is zero. I want to emphasize that this is the same, are the same, uh, are the same structure constant uh, corresponding to the uh, self interaction of the gate uh, or the vector group. In the other words, the self interaction of the vector boson determines the structure constant of the algebra, and the other interaction between the fermion and the, and, and the vector should be satisfied with the algebra, determined by one coefficient. So you're saying you could have gauged SU2 left cross SU2 right. There's different gauge groups. Yeah. Then there'd be a two left and two right. But, 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 uh, no, 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 that is would be a C lab C right, but I'm trying to say that C A B C can be decomposed into uh, into a uh, into block component. That I'm trying to say. C B C okay. For the semi-simple uh, group, C B C is just uh, just the same. But for the not but, but the product of the group, not, not semi-simple uh, group, this one can be decomposed to different blocks. That's what I mean by C B C. Is it clear? Yeah, you mean two left. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this is this is a, 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 a block diagonal. Yeah. Okay, for the, then you you, you calculate this uh, different helicity M2, the, uh, uh, the same helicity of the fermion, you got the linear energy growing behavior, you need a Higgs mechanism, you need to add, you need to add Higgs. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's say in this way, this. Uh, Scalar fermion fermion interaction uh, 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 will preserve gauge variance. In, in a, what, what does it mean by preserve gauge variance? Is the saying, okay, I, I group the longitudinal component, the vector boson, and the physical scalar uh, to, uh, to all the scalar degree freedom. So the interaction between the fermions and the, the, all the scalar degree freedom. The matrix. HI corresponds to physical scalar, HA corresponds to longitudinal component of W. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, this definition is completely fixed by the high limit of, of, of the previous on shell amplitude. And uh, this single object, this group of matrix satisfy this, uh, satisfy the identity here, which means this HI is a invariant tensor in the fermion index space. In other words, if I if I uh, if I write the Lagrangian term, scalar fermion fermion with this complex matrix, this interaction term will pre preserve the the gauge transformation because this is the generator. For the generator, 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 it goes to zero, which means uh, this complex matrix is the invariant tensor. That's what I mean gauge invariant gauge invariant. This identity coming from the tree unitarity. Uh, maybe this is a very abstract, uh, uh, but, but that's, uh, that's a way to use. Uh, I mean, this is somehow the, the, the massive gauge boson exchange is high energy growth is being canceled by the Higgs exchange, right? Yeah. I mean, the fermion, fermion, gauge boson scattering yeah. is canceled by Higgs exchange. Right. But it's not the masses of the fermions that come in, the metallic cup. Well, I mean, not a mass of the fermion cup, but it's not coupling. And the sign. There is a mass of the fermion. Yeah. Where in the diagram is that mass of this? All right. Where in the diagram is that mass of this? Let me show. Yeah. 
I think this is why that company show up. For example, if I if I write down this IR massive amplitude, the massive vector and two fermion, I I I, I can take a highly limited immediate C, this structure in the way, and M two M three is the fermion mass. That's why I define that 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 the interaction with it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's clear. I mean, unitarity would all work in the case where the heat dead is zero, all the cancellations. Oh, that's why, oh, okay, we, we, did, we, we did not uh, did, did discuss, we did not discuss that particular limit. That particular tells you uh, everything in the matrix, right? Yeah, uh, but there's still your tau coupling. Yes. And those are sort of the theory. But but then if that's no Higgs wire, then the fermion is the matrix, no? Yeah, and that's why you just see tau coupling and gauge coupling. That's the point of that. Yeah, yeah. So is there a question or you comment? Saying <laughs> Sorry, I don't think I got it. Never mind. Just, I would prefer to see tau coupling than to see tau coupling instead of. In the background. Again. This is your copy. Yeah. Yeah. Gathering amplitude calculated. There's no. This is your copy. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you're here. Extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah, next line. This one? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, okay. L let me let me go. Okay, maybe I show the notation is very abstract. I'm saying I tilde is, is the run over I and A. H I is the 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 Yukawa coupling between between the physical scalar and the, the fermion. H A is the uh Gaussian boson or the W boson. Uh, uh, coupling to the two scalars. I define like this. Here, HI to the this identity involve HI and HA. Involve everything. Which means that in the UV, the physical scalar the wave, the, the wave combine with the uh, longitudinal component of gauge boson to a single object the HI tilde, and this HI tilde satisfy this identity. All I'm saying is the depth cancels out of that definition. So you didn't need to include the depth as part of your definition. Anyway, keep going. I'm not sure. Uh, because even if the cancel out, it still has something remaining, right? It's interesting. You want to show so it's natural to have the mass appearing. So the coupling is proportional to the mass. Yeah. So the constant of proportionality is the variance, if you like, right? Uh, even, even I say in, in, in a particular limit, uh, 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 the, the, the value goes to zero, this should be, uh, you call coupling divided by gauge coupling, right? It's still there, not a 100% uh, that cancels out. But it's just a parameterization when you're dealing with the I mean, yeah, in other ways, saying you know, yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's just notation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is why uh, everything, okay, I think that everything uh, in this uh, tree unitarity analysis tells you is that uh, if you want to have a tree unitary theory involved arbitrary number of massive fermion, arbitrary uh, uh, number of scalar, arbitrary number of vector boson. And uh, you, you know, the theory, if the if one theory is detected by true entirety, the longitudinal component of the gauge boson and the physical scalar should combine the uh, object, uh, uh, the interaction will preserve some V algebra, some group uh, uh, symmetry. That's, that is the whole essence is uh, uh, in the UV, 
the physical, all the physical scale up and logical component are in the same object. Of course, you can, you can satisfy this condition using block diagonal part. It's always possible to satisfy block diagonal part. But I'm trying to say this is the most general condition you must satisfy. Okay. Mm. I say, okay, I, I give some comparison between, between the Lagrangian approach and Anshar Amtil approach. Okay, from Lagrangian approach, of course, uh, we have some principal stationary action, and uh, we have this Wilsonian RDE is very powerful. And uh, also, we, we make a locality manifest in the sense uh, we, want to, uh, we want to make the uh, asymmetrics uh, uh, satisfied. I mean, we want to make the uh, asymmetrics the lone environment. And for, for Amsha approach, you see, we have no gauge redundancy because uh, we, are not, we are not want to make a locality manifest. Uh, we, we want to make a little goal manifest. But uh, in, uh, on the other hand, we have recursion relation. And a recursion relation, what, re, what recursion relations uh, uh, provide us is saying, if lower upon the Amsha amplitude satisfy low, uh, uh, is the Lorentz environment, so is the higher upon the amplitude. Uh, remember the the the, the Weinberg argument that saying um, why we want, want uh, we want this uh, uh, Hamiltonian to uh, interaction Hamiltonian uh, to write uh, in terms of spatial integral of some interaction density because we want the asymmetry to become learned environment. But here recursion recursion relation tells you if uh, if you starting from this uh, unshared three part of unshared amplitude you build to the higher point amplitude it automatically satisfies environment right so this is this is the way to, to say okay uh, the outlook is uh, uh, the bcf double recursion relation for massive vector for some uh, we hope to address this question first because uh, up to now we are focused on to do scaling actually we want to to, to do any level of for some scaling uh, to see if there exists any bcf double like recursion relation then we go we can go to loops Probably, let's say if I can do RGE, but that's a very ambitious uh, goal. Uh, so, conclusion we, we have the Anshar understanding of spontaneous broken gauge theory, uh, but this is uh, uh, understanding uh, uh, is not enough. Uh, we should go beyond to do studying. But, but uh, that is the open question uh, is, is it really uh, uh, will Anshar formulation in quantum theory really possible, or we need something else? Uh, we'll see. Also, just sort of not clear what did the on shell formulation buy you, or what does it potentially buy you? Because, I mean, in the end, you are, I think, are you looking at you're looking at the same processes that mm -hmm. Cornwall and his company looked at, mm -hmm. and you're imposing the same constraint on those processes, yeah, only that they are don't go with that, yeah, right? So is it more than doing their calculations in a new form, in a new, you know, language? Uh, but, but this, I should say the, 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 the as, I, as I mentioned, this uh, wide advantage is that you are able to talk about a three-party onshore M2, massive M2. That is my, my advantage compared to the approach. Uh, I think for, for three-party onshore M2, uh, we, we are trying to, use, we can say more, Conservatively for the for the for the four point onshore amplitude, we can say more conservatively the we provide the alternative calculation. Can see this way. Well, I mean, so is, it, is there a logical gap in uh, Cornwall and company? I mean, they started with a Lagrangian. Yes. That they said, okay, this is and it's a it's a Lagrangian involving uh, massive vector fields mm -hmm. and scalars and so on, right? Mm -hmm. And then they. Said the Lagrangian is the most general polynomial thing in mm. the right, and and so you might say, well, I'm gonna is that starting point really the most general starting point? And because your three point function, you're saying that you know as long as I have a massive spin one particle, mm. I'm not committed to some particular 
interpolating fields, right? Okay. Is that what I'm asking you? Is that what you're saying? I mean, if you said you'd be able to start with these three point functions. Does that mean that is the point that you don't have to even talk about fields? Yeah. In principle? Yeah. That's the. And uh, uh, you, you, think, you, you, you uh, I, I. I presented the field because I want to match the conventional yeah. uh, coefficient. But in first of all, you can start in from you, you can you can just start from this term, yeah, right. with arbitrary coefficient. Right. Yeah. And though that no notion of uh, everything is a, is a physical degree freedom, everything is a, a satisfied unsure, unsure condition. Uh, uh, it, it's more conceptually at this point, I should say, for for my, for, for, of course, for math is mine. You have this BCFW recursion relation, you have this uh, maybe in, in fossil volume mills, I mean, I'm to the hydron, a lot of stuff. For the massive one, uh, one uh, I should say the, 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 the same procedure applied here, uh, but you want to go beyond all this, let's say, uh, I think first, uh, first uh, uh, study should be, let's say, for the BCFW recursion relation to the massive uh, vector field. If that is uh, possible, I think this will say uh, any tree level uh, on shell mass amplitude can be determined uh, in this way. I think this is much powerful. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, yeah, that's right. This whole business kind of got kicked off in a way or rejuvenated from, yeah, you say BCFW. Yeah, yeah. That was showing that you could use. That on shell amplitudes were sufficient to construct the whole theory. Yeah, yeah. But for the massive one, this, this is not clear yet. Yeah, yeah. I only talk about the two do scattering. We need to go beyond. Well, I, that's what I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand what is. Because uh, I, 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 I took somewhat of a dive into this stuff and I just never could understand what. In the massive, in the massive case, there are clear advantages, mm. right? But in the massive case, I haven't really understood what the the real what is the power of this. Uh, for uh, the, the power uh, the, for the massive one, I should say the power for three party one shot to the is very easy to see, it's very powerful. The, you can study for massive one to deform to massive uh, massive so you one. You don't have BCFW. You exactly. Are you logically, are you logically just going to the finite rule? No, 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 no. We're not going to find my rule. We don't have PCW, uh, but, uh, but uh, we, we, we follow this procedure. Yeah, but what justifies that? I mean, the entirety and the locality. The entirety tells you when, when some momentum going on shell, uh, the, the, the factor that some on shell amplitude. Well, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when BCF, I mean, I remember when BCFW came out, you know, and the result, yeah. and it was not obvious to people before that that. Uh, you could make higher point amplitudes out of on shell amplitudes. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, 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 yeah, but here you're claiming that for. No, no, no. Two to two. This is only two to two. Okay. That's fine. So just for two to two. Yeah. You're yeah. saying that this, this much of BCFW, if you like, is true. No, this is a two to two scanning. This is not a recursion relation, but this is you know, well, two. It's giving me two to two in terms of yeah, two yeah. point amplitude. I'm going to say who yeah. proved this relation that you wrote down? Is it obvious? <laughs> oh, you are saying who proved this relation? Uh, I think the first one is uh, talked about by Nima. You see, um, the impossible to, to say for the two two is completely fixed by this way. Um, I, I'm not aware of any. BCFW is not trivial. It is no, no, no. BCFW, I'm trying to say, I'm not sure this is applied to any particle. I'm trying to say, for two to two. Yeah. There's no tree level. BCFW is also tree level. Sorry. It's not trivial. It is not trivial. And even, well, suppose you have the you probably can also do this for like five points. Yeah. Not clear. It's not this clear. Is the first BC, this is the analog of the first BCFW. BCFW is just a whole chain of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not clear to me. I mean, just uh, maybe it's very elaborate. You just have to. So maybe there are many factorizations. Each one have to check. Is that the, the case? Or, yeah, that's the case. But, uh, but uh, the. Start in post in you know, the carriage. Fill up your entirety and the, also the whatever the factorization. The foundation and the locality. For all possible scenarios, I would guess you can still fix M5. Yeah, yeah. 
for example, maybe just uh, a lot of words. Is that uh, the I'm not 100% sure that, that okay, I, okay. I'm, that I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'm 100% sure for two scatting, you can do this way. So basically, well, if I, if I snap this two, then I can just do this way. I mean, this is probably the point is that you can use factorization. For example, the we know for, if you have a Lagrangian in the five point integrity, you still have an answer. Yeah, right? uh, it's a unique answer. Right? You mm -hmm. don't have an answer. Uh, so, so if this, this procedure doesn't work for five point, how could you hope that that way to get something? I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, so this is another simple, but I just think it's, uh, it's uh, something that goes through this exercise, maybe a lot of work for five points. I think probably can also pick them five, that's really right. Then you need a lot, a lot of work, really. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I mean, arbitrary uh, number, if you say it's after you apply to any aim, right? I mean, you know, it just goes to the next step. Well, not only any aim, but you can any factorization channel. Yeah. So that's kind of the miracle. You, you don't have to check every factorization channel. Yeah, yeah, you can choose some. One, and then you can generate. Yeah, you, you can choose some. That's probably too much to hope for in the master's case, right? Uh, I mean, BCFW is far beyond what the refinement does, I guess. Right? Yeah. You just choose one cut, one unitary cut. You'll choose, and you reconstruct yeah. the whole thing, and you're guaranteed that every other unitary cut works. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. That's probably too much to hope for here. You probably do have to check. So that, I think that's what maybe Cynthia is saying. If you just did the five point exercise, uh -huh. it would be probably involved multiple channels. Then you would just by brute force. By brute force, you check every possible channel. Possible, probably yes, probably yes. You, or, you, or conversely, you find that there's some kind of a miracle, yeah, yeah. and then you probably are starting to see that maybe there is something like that. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I, our hope of course is go beyond the four party arm field in, in, a, in an efficient way, which means that there's some recursion relation you can you, you can find find out. I think that would be very, very, very interesting. Uh, but I, if you follow this procedure to target the five and a six. Uh, I, I don't know how much uh, how much uh, inside uh, it is. Okay. This, is this a schematic formula? In other words, what is t squared? Is that really a sum over s t and u channels? Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some, okay. okay. So that's a sum of channels. channels. Yeah, yeah. Okay, s t and u. Is not is it's so not a, basically the Feynman diagram. You, if you want that. It's, it's not yeah. So that way, it's not the S T T S W. Not not yeah. You're coming over the channel. Yeah, the S W does not require this. So that's probably already the proof that you can't, there's no BCFW, right? Because. No, 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 for, no, no, I'm trying to say for, for no, no, for, for method is one, you can also calculate this by following this procedure. Okay. So in a dynamic, is it the um, P square minus M square? Uh, in the P square minus uh, um, I square. Yeah. Sorry. I, uh, this one, this one is for method is one, I just copied that. Got to add. You you absolutely right. Yeah, that is the sum. That is the m i square. I'm trying to say for massive is one. You can also calculate the total scaling following this procedure. You calculate the STU channel, then uh, uh residual. Then you impose the consider factorization. Everything fixed. Mm. Uh, but for massive one, you need more. Right? I think you you really need this uh, this contact term to to cancel this uh, this uh, bad and uh, entirely uh, bad energy giving behavior. Couldn't you try to do something where, you know, if you have, let's say you have some, uh, you're trying to construct, I don't know, the four point amplitude, right? Uh -uh. You could try to go to a place in complex momentum space where you can, uh, where all the particles, can you do this where all the particles are on shell, but somehow you can, or you should be able to approximate them as being massless. See what I mean? So then you have a series of amplitudes that are in the in the, the high energy limit if you like mm. right mm. you would sort of get a different bcfw recursion relation every, for every solicity uh -uh, yes and then the so then you do have some kind of bcfw but you still then have to unify them into one massive amplitude uh -huh. 
You see what I mean? Yeah, I got, got what, what, what you said. Yeah. That may be possible. But, but at least uh, uh, people had proved if uh, two particles, uh, two massive and one kind of mass, massive, the other one are massive, then it's possible to do it. Well, it seems like this formula is really literally, you could prove it by just taking the Feynman rules and writing them in the inner hallucinated. Right? <laughs> Isn't that just. Yeah, if you want it, yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, Okay, so I believe that. Yeah, if you want, you can you can do it. Well, sure, for sure. Yeah. You know, you are saying because uh, you can add in some some. Uh, uh, okay, because it literally is. That's what it is. If I just write down the Feynman rule and I write them in terms of the the on shell three point amplitude, uh, I would get that formula. Yes. Right? Yes. It's all the possible Feynman diagram you're adding on it, but but one thing is that this might go to say. Um, Okay, uh, I have the freedom to choose this on shell three and particle M2. Yeah, because I can I can make them satisfy the on shell condition. Uh, and the, 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 the relation with the message one are evident. Then I, I can glue them for one of the first glue them together, adding some kind of term, then I get the final result. Uh, in principle, if you want to study from Feynman rule, uh, probably you you need to to have some um of say some uh, offshore propagator, some some kind of stuff, but it's okay. But it's the same thing, I think. I, yeah. I feel like you have some propagators. You have some, exactly. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like somehow you should be able to use, uh, somehow you should be able to use GPS-W for the maximum limit, at least in for every holistic state separately, right? Yes, that is always possible, yes. Right. The, 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 the point is, uh, that, that, let's say that the point is, you know, we want to calculate in the, in the highest state, in, in the mass state is empty, because we know all the highest state mass beams are using BCFW recursion relation. We know the mass is one. Then the question is, uh, how to determine the massive one from mass is one? What's the procedure to, to obtain, obtain it? That procedure is not clear to me. Uh, for for, for 3 point shell amplitude, I have the procedure. In this one, this particular energy limit, this one is, is still like outer E. It's much, much larger than the mass of the particle. Yeah. But, uh, that, that, that's what I mean by uh, this one scale like uh, it's the cubic, this, uh, it, it is scale like E. That's what I mean by scale like E. The unshall condition tells you. The unshell condition tells you the square bracket times the angular bracket equal to the mass. Right. In this limit, the, 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 the square bracket is order E, the angular bracket is order M right. divided by E. Right, right, right. I, 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 can, I have the freedom because in the complex momentum, I have the freedom to choose the angular bracket to satisfy unshell condition. And the square bracket is arbitrary. Yeah, uh, 
Yes, uh, but, but, but that requires you for different Alice state. Different you. Different yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I, I, I think I'm trying to say is a, is a thing. If you, you want to calculate the, the, the massless limit of some, uh, some uh, ang, ang, angle on like angle on scatting, you can do BCFW, no problem. But in other, in, in other high state combination, you do another BCFW person equation. The question is how to combine so, them to a single object. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Then you, but if sometimes you have the answer, in other words, if you started with some set of three point functions that you believe, mm -hmm. you don't have any choice in the four point function, except you can add a constant. Oh, I got, I got the, what I was saying. You're seeing this way. Uh, in the BCFW procedure, you, in, 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 let's say for, for, for one particular, I'm not sure you have got, got what you're trying to say. Is that in a in a the procedure, uh, you 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 just you 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 have some uh, three party on amplitude times three party on amplitude, but uh, you you replace the three party on amplitude in the massive one. That's what you want to say. Well, I'm just trying to say you somehow take the the you choose some unitary cut, mm -hmm. right, and then you but you 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 look at it in some limit where it can be approximated by. Uh, Massless amplitude, right? Yeah. And then you can apply massless BCFW, right? And so you get the answer in the massless limit. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you, you see. For a certain cut of this amplitude. Yes, that's a, that's a great. Right. And then you, can, you have to do it separately for the different helicities. And then you have to, as you say, you have to combine them. The, the, how to combine them, that is. But the only freedom you have is adding a counter charge. Yes, but the, the counter term is a lot, right? For, um, um, is a, it's allowed, sure. Yeah, yeah. The question, the, 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 I think the, what the BCW tells you, you don't need the contact term. Right, well, that's- That's a powerful BCW. Mm -hmm. Everything, BCW, well, the BCW procedure tells you everything is in terms of the unshared particle. Well, somehow, only... the, somehow the counter term has to be subleading, in other words, the counter term has to be the same thing. The, the, the way is, is uh, uh, how to fix the contact term is still. Yeah. Yeah, this is the uh, is saying uh, I, I take a n minus two momentum real. Yeah. I take a two momentum uh, a complex. Right. I particularly deform the two momentum. Then I only need to consider some some factor that channel. Right. Yeah, exactly. that, that's, the, that's the point. But the, 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 the point is that for that to work, you need to use different momentum shapes for different high density conversation. Why? Why could you try to use the same? Because, because the requirement, uh, that, that requirement, let's say, uh, uh, let's say that the origin of PCMW is a, let's say, uh, let's say uh, minus two minus, we can perform Then the amplitude becomes something empty. You need to ensure this condition. It's only, for example, this one, for this high density construction, like for this one construction, you, you do this moment shape. But uh, 
But if I if you if you go to demo I say it's a for one plus two minus, it will say and they equal to three. I mean, this moment I say, in short, the entirety condition goes to zero when they go to infinity. But same moment I say, for you believe the entirety gate, you will say this all the same. We call it the same, not the same. Yeah. 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 If I have it by visualization, everything is determined by the whole. MJ is determined by the whole. Okay. That's, 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 that's the whole. Well, I can't actually, yeah, so that's the point I, I said it wrong. Yeah, you can't actually choose the factorization channel freely. It kind of shows them for you. Yeah. If you look at the amplitude, yeah, yeah. there's a particular channel that you've got a simple answer. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the really uh, uh, challenge is. Uh, we know for massive one, this one, this one, a single object, right? Mm -hmm. The massive, the massive one combines the characteristic and the characteristic to a single object. Then how do you do moment of shift? Uh, mm -hmm. well, like I said, I mean, I, I, I still wonder if this stuff, I honestly wonder if this stuff is really good for I think if I can find some desired recursion solution for Matthew one, I think that will be very powerful to calculate that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, just, I mean, do you think there's a hope? I think uh, maybe uh, I should try it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that will simplify all the calculation from the multiple sum production. I think that will be multi part, part time production, multi like gauge person, top park for the Matthew one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Thank you.